Uh, yeah, I once had a class starting at 9 a.m. And I asked people if we could start a little bit later. There was only one student at a conflict, and I couldn't do it. So this is the opposite. So I don't think any of you have a conflict, so we'll start at 7.30 unless there are any objections by... No, 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 no. He, he, just, he, he actually had a class uh, at the time, but, but I don't think any of you have class in this 15 reading window. So, okay. All right, very good. That way we'll, we'll finish at 9, 7, 9, 15, and you go get home to your families a little bit earlier. I do not. I've done that before. I mean, it's a good question. A couple of years ago, I did teach it, and I gave people the option which one to attend. Uh, but I, I don't teach this one during the day, so I don't think it will work for you guys. Okay. Um, all right. So that's good. I'll, I'll just make a note. If I don't hear any objections, I'll just have you guys planted here at 7.30, um, starting on class on Tuesday. Okay? Sound good? I didn't think anyone would object, but I always, I always try, to, try to ask. You knew, you knew I was going to ask, didn't you? Yeah. Shut down. Well, okay. Well, all right. I'll make a note to start a little bit earlier for next week. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions? Any questions? Things in your mind from the last class? Yes. Uh, sir, what's your name? I just want to get to know everyone. Kevin, I, I had my little bag. Yes. I don't know what happened. You lost it or you don't have it? Well, I know your name is Kevin now, so that's good. But just try and bring it before class. If you didn't get one, um, I'll bring uh, a couple next class, and you can fill it out. But I don't want to do this every week. OK. Bring 10 cards. OK, I'll bring a few. All right. Other questions? <laughs> Proceed, sir. Proceed. Good question. Well, you said claim of title, didn't you? See, you see, I, I told you, and I, I made the mistake myself in class. So there are two things, right? There's color of title, and there's claim of right. They're so easy to confuse, you just want to. Okay, so which, Kevin, which one are you asking about? Color of title or claim of right? Color of title, because claim of right was the one where we had kind of like four different. I think there were three, but yes. Three, three. Yeah. Color of title deals with situations where someone has some documentation that turns out to be not accurate, not authentic, perhaps forged. Right? Color of title is you have some paperwork somewhere that suggests you have an ownership interest. So the example I can think of is I gave someone a forged deed. Right? I think you claim color of title there. Mr. Robinson thought he had it because he filed this you know, piece of paper with the county courthouse, right? Uh, I don't know if that works, but color of titles, you have some sort of paperwork. And at least in Texas, when you have some sort of paperwork, instead of having a five-year limit, you have a three-year limit. And that's really where it makes a difference, which, which limitation period you have to satisfy. OK. Well, thank you for the question. Uh, by the way, did everyone see the dean's email? I swear we didn't cahoot on that. We didn't like coordinate that one. I was thinking of you. Um, I won't even rip my shirt. No, uh, I'm not. Actually, I am wearing a wire, <laughs> uh, so I don't need to. Uh, you don't know the reference. Oh, uh, there's a question whether one of the Astros player actually wore some sort of s device. No, they came out. I know. I saw the statement. I saw this. I saw the tweet. Um, but the question is, you know, if a supervisor, such as a coach on a team, is aware of some sort of improper. Bear responsibility? I think the answer has to be yes. I'm sorry? All I did, yeah. You know, I didn't make the football team. Uh, but, but yeah, I, 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 it was disappointing. It was a very weird period of time. I was ac actually, my interview at South Texas was the day after Joe Paterno was fired. That's all I wanted to talk about. So that was, that's, that's my for interview. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was a long time ago. Almost. God, almost eight or nine years ago. There was a statue of him. They actually took a statue down the dark of night. I mean, that's like, and this is like a, like maybe an eight foot tall statue. It was a huge stone statue. And they got basically a forklift. And it's like sitting in a warehouse, like Indiana Jones style. It's just, it's like just sitting somewhere. They won't tell anyone where it is. It's, it's remarkable to happen. But I, 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 I think it was probably justified to get rid of him. 
glad, glad we all agree. Okay. Let's start a question. Um, I usually try to do a poll question, usually multiple choice, uh, to start the whoops, to start the class. Can I get this on one screen? Here we go. Okay. Okay. So this is your question, and this might take you a minute or so to think about. Uh, there are two contiguous lots. Just you know, contiguous <laughs> means next to each other; they touch each other, right? Lots one and two are owned by X and Y, respectively. X and Y are not in possession, meaning they're not on the property. The lots are conveyed by an invalid deed from Z to A. So, Kevin, to your question, an invalid deed would be evidence of color of title. Okay? For, so the lots, both lots are conveyed from Z to A. Okay? A enters lot one and occupies in the usual manner for the period required by the statute of limitations. Subsequently, A sues X and Y to quiet title as to lots one and two. So your question is, which of the following are true? You hate these ones, don't you? Right? A owns lot one. A owns lot two. All of the above. None of the above. <coughs> and I'll take, take some time to put an answer in, please. <laughs> Don't make assumptions. <laughs> this is the number one reason people exam questions wrong. They start assuming stuff. Don't. This, this is a question where the things you need to know are there. And let me put it differently. If you think I didn't say something, you probably are getting it wrong. Right? You, you, may, be, you may be digging too hard, and you may be on a, on a tangent. All right. I think I see about 30 people. A few more seconds. Get you all your answers in. Hmm. OK. All right. Where did I finish off last time? Who was the last one I called on? Me. I think you, you, you were before me. Jessica, so Chris, are you next? Uh, no, I got called on. Twice Colleen? Before. You? Yeah, that's right. So Colleen, OK, I'll call <laughs> in uh, Corbett. Fine. What are the elements, Corbett, for adverse possession? Okay, Colleen, fine. You can, you're on deck, Corbett. Um, an entry that is actual and exclusive is open and notorious. She must put the owner on notice continuously with that shortage period and refers to under 10 years old. Okay, very good. Thank you, Colleen. Whenever you have any adverse possession question, don't cheat. Actually go through each of the four elements. You don't want to cheat. You're going to say, oh, I, yeah, of course, yes. If you go through each elements, it will become obvious. So, Corbett, I'll ask you this question now. Did A adversely possess both lots? Lots one and two. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so what did you put here? I put C. You put C all the above. Okay. Uh, Justin, what did you put here? Uh, C. You put none of the above. Yeah. Okay, why did you put none of the above? Because they didn't give the actual owner's notice. Okay. Mac, what do you think? Uh huh. All right. So let's see what we got. The results. Okay. No one put B. Oops. I'm sorry. This this thing is very buggy. If you try and move it around, no one put B. Okay. We got a lot of A's. About half of the class put A. I've had. 25 oh, 25 25 put C and 25 D. Okay. The answer is A. And the reason why is what Mac said. Um, a never entered lot B. The first element of adverse possession is entry. If you don't have entry, if you don't have entry, you do not have adverse possession. Even the lots are next to each other. The lots considered separate. You need to enter each lot separately. Now, Justin said that there was no notice, and I, I want to. Did did some people think that that there was no notice? We put none of the above. Yeah, I, I I encourage you to read the question carefully. It says enters lot and occupies in the usual manner. That's a signal to you that they're doing so in an open, notorious fashion. 
right? They're not hiding, right? And and you're not your your, your instincts aren't wrong, and I don't want to I don't want to pick on you, uh, but this is often why multiple choice questions are hard, because you start assuming things when the answer is in front of you. Now I don't give multiple choice questions in my exam, right? I never would. That way, in an essay, you would write um, the element of notoriety is not met because they're they're not there. I wouldn't give that full credit. I give it partial credit. But I think the key phrase here is occupies in the usual manner. I think that tells you that this is something that is done openly. Okay? All right, but I think the important thing is, uh, Max said a minute ago, there's no entry on B, so there's no adverse possession on B. Okay? Yeah. So I put C um, because on page 88, the bottom, um, it says the advantage that a person may gain from constructive possession is that activities relied upon to establish adverse possession will reach not only the part of the premises actually occupied, but the entire premises described in the premises. Yes. So the part of the premise, right? That's considering black acre and white acre. So you have to have, if you, if you squat in part of black acre, you might be able to claim all of black acre. But these are different lots. I see. Okay. Right? The key word there is premise. Okay. By the way, this is in your book, this question. I didn't make it up. It's on page 89. I mean, you did the reading, you've probably seen it. Yeah, uh, in the back. Oh, your thing's backwards. <laughs> That's OK. Yeah, go, go for it. I put out B uh, because of like, the fourth element under common law of the So you're saying the facts didn't show that they were aggressive? So you're saying uh, the law's going to be valid deed. So you're saying there's only a good faith mistake. So your so your position, this is why I hate multiple choice questions. By the way, this happens every year. If you want to know the book, the answer key to the book, the professors think it's actually uh, A. But I, every year someone raises their hand. I think that's that's, sorry, better than D, right? That's better than the no notorious because this there's nothing in the question indicating that they were aggressive. Now let me ask you, Blessing. How would you describe the state of mind of someone who had a forged deed? What would, what, what, what would their state of mind be described as? I think so, right? Now, I didn't even tell you it's a common law jurisdiction. So let me, let me take a step back. The reason why these questions make people angry is I try and make them quick to be done in a minute, but they take 10 minutes to go through. But I always find it useful to see how different people answer them. Now, I saw another hand there. Yeah. And uh, I can see your name tag. Is that Angie? Okay. Uh, two things to me. I did pick A, but I graduated a little bit because I was thinking taking B was a lot. That was kind of picking me up a little bit. And so one of the interpretations, a lot of the interpretations are not Um, The fact that they're next to each other? Ah. The reason why that they're next to each other is actually trying to trick up the issue Colleen had, because they thought they might be the same thing. If you squat on one, you're squatting on the other. I think that's why they framed the question that way. But the fact that they're black acre and white acre should make a difference. I saw another one. Was that Melanie? What do you mean? That goes to continuity, right, you're saying? Oh. Well, so let me put it this way. If you're on the land and you're using it in the usual manner the owner would, that is something that the owner would actually be able to see, right? Just think of a house. If the usual owner would come and go every day, go to work, come home, sleep at night, whatever, you're doing it in an open, notorious fashion. People don't usually live in their land in a secret, cryptic fashion, you know, hiding. Right. If you, mean have it's. I'll, I want to answer your question precisely. It's not about whether the owner actually gets noticed. It's whether the squatter lives there in a manner that would put the owner on notice. Right now, maybe the owner is completely oblivious and doesn't pay attention to what he should. But so long as the squatter exists in the manner that he should, then I think it's okay. Yeah, uh, Mike, and then it may limit next. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. What, what, what was the question? I don't remember. The average possession law? Crap? No, 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 no. You use 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 big words. You gotta. We we don't we don't use those words to describe things. Right, right. I mean that, that that's an argument that, that that people often raise with adverse possession that merely by staying there for X number of years, and the original owner takes some action to kick you out, you've now acquired title to the land. Yeah, I. You're asking my opinion. I try to give my opinion. Uh, uh, it actually frustrates students. Really, it does. But I try not to. Okay, thanks. <laughs> I look. I I try not to. I, I I occasionally do. I probably will slip, but. You know, I, I go back and forth. I, I, th I think there are pros and cons this one. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think it's an open and shut one. Millen. In con law, I might give a little more opinionated, but in this class, I can keep. I think neutral enough. Yeah, go on. Yesterday, we spoke, and I think I asked it somebody else about what if somebody lives outside the state and they just have the property, they pay the taxes, and everything. Never show up. They live outside the state. Yeah. So somebody comes and closes the land, rents it. Well, well, yeah. Well, look. Let me ask you a general question, though. If you're living out of the state and someone breaks into your property, would you ever know about it? Yes, but it can be more than ten years. Oh, right. So I think what the law would say is, if you have a property and you can't be bothered to check on it once in a decade, then tough luck. Yeah. I think that that that's what the. I mean, you, you may not like adverse possession at all, but if you really own a piece of property and you don't even have any knowledge about what's going on there for a decade. I mean, imagine if you had, like, I had a property at 100 Hershey West Coast, and somebody goes and is flooding one of the acres. It was a lie that you're going to. Yeah, and that, that's, the, the, that's the partial one, right? You have a guy who sort of squats in a corner, right? Now, the, the constructive possession, I didn't go into that, it's in the notes. You don't always get all 100, you might get part of it. But, but yeah, we have a huge plot of land, you have a bigger obligation to make sure people aren't living on it. Fair, fair point. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, but yeah, I guess that sounds, sounds plausible. Yeah, these, this, this question was, I, I have a thing in my notes, students will get angry at this question, I know. Uh, but it's actually in your book on page 89, if you don't believe me. And there is an answer key, there, there's like a teacher's manual, which I, I use increasingly less and less year after year, because it, it doesn't anticipate the range of reactions students get. Actually, I, I, so your editor, the Srihila, it's like on the bottom, I, I had lunch with him last year at, uh, in Chicago, and I was telling him all the stuff I didn't like about the book. He's like, okay, thanks, Josh. Uh, but, but it's okay. I do. I complain. I, I, I pass. There's this. You have this book of future interests, right? You know that diagram? Remember that awful diagram with A, B, C, and D? There's an error in it, right? The way they label vertical privity on both sides is wrong. Only one side should be vertical privity. And like, it's like, oh, we never realized that. So there's stuff in there that I don't like. But it's, it's, the reason why I use this book, it's the least worst book. Um, the other books are worse. And I don't mean to, 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 to offend other professors who edit the books, but this is the least I've ever seen, so I, I use it. I'm sorry. Okay. And there's a new edition coming out like in a year or two. It's going to make it even worse. It always happens. So at least you got in without buying a brand new one. Okay. Let's start <coughs> stuff today. Um, let's talk about tacking for a minute. Tacking. Uh, uh, Kate, Caitlin, okay. Caitlin, Caitlin, what is tacking? What is tacking in the reading? Everyone sign the attendance? Yeah, okay. What is tacking? Not tacky, tacking. Yeah, it's like you're attaching to, but anyway. But how is it used in the reading? You're in the ballpark. Malin, what's tacking? So I think that it is when two individuals 
squatting it in. Uh huh. And then one of the individuals goes stays in the lane for a portion of the time. Good. The other or one individual who stays in the lane for the rest. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, hacking is defined in six, section 16.023 uh, um, of the Texas uh, Code. Um, what hacking allows is multiple people to come together and jointly satisfy a statute of limitations. Right, so let's say a statute of limitations is 10 years. Person A saves for five years, and person B saves here for the other five years. Right? But in order for them to tack, right, in order for them to combine their periods of limitation, you need this lovely word, privity of a state. You're probably having these awful flashbacks now to contracts and probably property one, right? You have these awful flashbacks. Leslie, I'm sorry to do this to you. What does privity of a state mean? What's privity of a state? What does privity of a state re what's what's privity? Just just make it simpler. What does privity uh, mean? Just a term by itself. No, no, Rebecca. What's privity? Yes. Privity, and you'll never forget this. It comes from the same wor root word as private, like body parts. It's a, it's the same root word. It refers to a relationship between two things. There you go. Right. Um, Privity concerns A and B, how are they connected? And generally, for there to be privity, there has to be some sort of an, a positive relationship between A and B, right? So turn in your books, please, to page 101. I'll, I'll put it on the screen also. Uh, and there's a, there's a question there. Uh, Demetrius, you want to, I think, I think you're next. Now, 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 now you're actually next. Uh, you want to read the questions on the bottom of 101? In 2008, enters. <coughs> it, it's just labeled number one. It says in 2008, enters. Okay. Okay. So let's just understand our facts here, right? A enters Blackacre adversely. And that word adversely basically means hostile, right? It means open and notorious. Like the word adversely kind of just absorbs all the stuff that Blessin and Davis and Mac, uh, Justin were asking about. Okay, so A enters adversely in 2000. He's there for seven years. Then 2007, B comes along, tells A, hey, get out. A feels threatened. And he leaves. And then B sticks around until 2010. So Demetrius, is there tacking in this case between A and B? Is there a privity of a state between A and B? No. Tell me why. Um, because he was threatened. He was threatened. He was threatened. Good, coercion. That's exactly right. I think that's exactly right. Yeah. To have privity of a state, you have to have some sort of agreement. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be in writing. And I, I say this with some hesitation, right? Because generally writing is a good evidence of an agreement. But you can have a mutual pact where I say, hey, I'm going to be here on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You're going to be here on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sundays, and that's our deal. And that's fine, right? That was like my exam question last year, where they basically, they, they think they, they alternated weeks, like this is week one and you're week three, you know, they sort of split it up, right? So for privity, but you have to have some sort of agreement that both of them are on the, on the same page for you. You can't have a hot relationship. Okay? Come with me. All right, um, Alexis, you want to read uh, question number two? It's a little bit further down. In 1994, A enters adversely from Blackacre owned by O. Okay. In 1995, O dies, leaving a will that divides Blackacre to B for life, remaining to C. Good. In 2010, B dies without ever having entered upon Blackacre as C owns Blackacre. Okay, so again, in 94, A enters adversely, which... When they say enters adversely, that just absorbs all the adverse possession elements. O dies in 95, right? So Alexis, let me ask this question, please. When O dies, does that stop the clock, the 10-year clock that's ticking? Uh, 
Yes. No. Why not? Yes, very good. So what happens when um, B dies after 2010? Who owns Blackacre? Um, when B dies, C has Blackacre. So does C? Yes. Wait. What, what about O? Okay. When B dies, who owns Blackacre? Um, O is alive. I mean, I'm sorry, O is alive. But okay, O's still on the land. Oh, and it's been, it's been like 50 years or something, whatever the math is. So, um, <laughs> then A. She said 15, yeah. Okay, that's right. A's, A owns it. A death or a conveyance doesn't alter the calculus, right? Think of it this way. If you're O and you know there's a squatter, during the entirety of your life you have an obligation to kick the person out. Right? B has a life estate. When B has a life estate, he has an obligation to kick out squatters. He fails to, it's his problem. Indeed, C has a remainder. I think even C would have an interest to evict the squatter. Because if B is lazy, C may never get her remainder. So in this case, A, A wins. A gets it. Everyone okay with that question? Yes, go ahead. A subsequent conveyance doesn't defeat adverse possession. right? Think of it this way. The clock doesn't stop when it goes from O to B. right? The clock doesn't stop when it's conveyed. Right, Liz, if I own Blackacre and you're squatting on it, and I sell Blackacre to uh, Davis over here, <coughs> the clock keeps ticking on the adverse possession. It doesn't stop. It only stops when there's a disability, perhaps, which we'll talk about a little bit later in class. Yeah? So this is just for them, but I guess from, you know how the, the life estate for also be like you get the person's, oh, you get the yeah. person's life estate. You yeah. Know? So I guess A doesn't, he takes it, I mean, Look, A is squatting. He doesn't really care who, who has the, the, the interest or the future interest. But whoever has the future interest has an obligation to ensure the lot's not being squatted on. Right? Because think of it this way. If C knows that B is lazy and B doesn't really care, C could actually intervene in the courts as a, as a remainderman to try and get the squatter off. Everyone okay with that one? All right, let's do the first case. This is a messed up case, isn't it? This is a messed up case, and I'll help you through the facts, but uh, I think, Anna, you're next. Um, let's try to... Yeah, I know. There's a lot of people, and um, I'm going to try to make this as straightforward as possible. So just to start off, um, this, this case is uh, taking place in the Hood Canal, which is a region in Washington State. Anyone ever been there? Beautiful place, but it's this very... Uh, this projector sucks. You can't really see anything. The contrast is really bad. Um, but it's a very jagged, rocky, it's actually the side monitors I think are better. It's a very jagged, rocky area of water. And when you have these very jagged, rocky areas in your water, boundaries shift and change all the time, right? Earth falls to the ground, there's erosion, uh, uh, things change very frequently. So what makes this case so complicated is the uncertain nature of the terrain. Right, Anna. So let's start us off, and, and I may jump in to, to clarify a few things, but just, just start off. And th this, this picture, which is on the teacher manual website, is a hell of a lot better than the, than the picture in your book. So I'm just going to use this one instead of the one in your book. I, I just go ahead, Anna. Just start, please. Um, so it says, starting back, uh, it's used by 1932. Okay. Um, Nicole. Good. Kunto. Okay, just, just pause there on it just one second, all right? So right here, this is Kunto's house, right? Kunto's house is on lot B, and this was a house that was owned by McCall. Okay, Go, please proceed, Anna. Okay, and then um, in the 50-foot wide parcel, uh, 
but the D for that house does not actually no. describe that part of, of the land. Right. So where was the deed for the Kunta house? Yeah, the, the facts in this case are terrible. Um, for the towers, maybe? Okay. I'm trying to remember where that part of it came All right, let me, let, let, me, let me jump in for a second, okay? Uh, this diagram, I think, is a little bit better than the one in your book, but if you like that one, that's fine. There are three lots that are relevant, right? There's lot A, lot B, and lot C. C is not labeled, but fine. Okay. Lot A is the land described in Kunto's deed. Where was Kunto's house? Kunto's house was on lot B. Ah, so what land was lot B? Land B was in the Moyer deed. Everyone with me, okay? Then what about Moyer's house, right? Moyer's house was on lot C. Whose land was owned by Lot C? Howard's deed. All right. Howard didn't have a house. That 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 that's the just just make it easier, right? Forget Howard's house for me. It doesn't really matter here. All right. All right. So Matt, let me call on you for a minute. Um, what did Howard do here that was perhaps a little bit shady? Ha Howard was not the good guy here. Good. <coughs> okay, so if you were a good neighbor at this point, right, you weren't a jerk, what would you propose if you realized basically everyone had one lot over? Yeah. Everyone just sell their deed to their neighbor. And just one for one, right? Wouldn't that be really easy, Matt? No, 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 no. But that's not what Howard did. Uh, Howard was up to some no good business, right? Waji, well, what did Howard do instead? He, he, he did something that was very shady. And there's something that we don't know, but there's something going on here. What did Howard do? Howard discovered that the survey did not coincide with the fire survey. Good. And then he disputed um, that the Moyers, he disputed that the Moyers Well, what transaction did Howard engage in? Howard did a transaction. He engaged in a transaction that, that, that screwed things up even more, I think. Allah? Ah, so he switched, right? He switched. So again, the Howard had the <coughs> land owned by the Moyers, right? So basically, the H Howard sold to Moyers the land that the Moyers' house was on. So Moyers, good, right? Moyers now held the land where his house was. So Moyers happy, right? He's good. But what did Howard get in exchange? B. Howard received the deed to the land where Kunto's house is. Dude wanted to take Kunto's house. This was only resided on during the summer. Defeat adverse possession. No. Why not? Because it's during summer house, so they want to do it in yeah. the summer. Yeah, these are summer houses. So even if you're there only three or four months out of the year, 
that satisfies the continuous requirement. Right? The harder issue is tacking. And again, tacking is when you combine multiple people. Because Kunto wasn't there long enough by himself. But his predecessors were. Right? So I'm sorry, was it Avery? Yeah. Oh, I remember. That's good. Avery. Um, it's funny. I, the labels are made by Avery. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, anyway, so Avery, let me ask you, I will never forget that name now. Um, can you tack together, in this case, Kunto with his predecessor in interest to get to the requisite number of years? Yes. Okay, tell me why. Because they, they had privy. Okay, so that privy, that part's actually easy, right? They actually had a deed between them. The much harder element of this case is the fourth element, right? We have entry, check. We have Continuous, check. I think we have open notorious. I think we do. Check. Maybe we don't. And Xavier, what about the final element, the claim of right element? Is there, is there a claim of right, or did they have the, the requisite state of mind to squat? <coughs> Why do you say that? So were these aggressive trespassers, Xavier? Were these, was Kunto an aggressive trespasser? No. He was not. How would you describe his state of mind? What, what phrase would we, would we use for that? Yeah, he said <coughs> it earlier. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Kevin, you said it earlier. Oh, well. You said it. I think so, right? I think Kunto was living on the land in good faith. He thought the deed given to him was a deed for his land. But only after the survey was performed, you have your survey in your pocket now or no? no. Oh, you had it for that one day? No, that was so fortuitous, right? So only after the survey was conducted did Kunto realize it. I'm sorry? Yeah, right? OK, so here's the question then, right? Is a good faith state of mind enough in this case? Tom, was a good faith state enough to have a claim of right in this case? Yes. OK, tell me why. Yeah. So the court accepts the good faith standard here, don't they? Yes. Right. So this is similar to the New Jersey case, right? They say, look, you don't have to be an aggressive hostile trespasser. It's enough to be a good faith mistake. Therefore, Kunto and his successors can be tacked. And the period is met for adverse possession. Kunto wins. Howard lost. And, and this really sucks for him because he gave up his lot to Moyer. So Howard got nothing in the end. I mean, well. Look, um, let me let me answer your, your 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 this question this way. Very often in the law, the party that's a jerk loses, and I don't know if that means that the law is not on their side, but at least the books and case books that are taught to students, the jerk usually loses. So, you remember from property one, the spite fence, right? Where to prevent someone from crossing over if there's a license or something, you build a fence. Almost always, a person who takes a fence loses who builds a fence. Uh, you may remember from property one, self-help, right? If you have a tenant who's not paying his rent and the guy changes the locks, the landlord changes the locks, right? You're probably going to lose your court case if you change the locks on someone to kick him out. For whatever reason, the people who are shady, the people who sort of do the thing that, you know, you think is that, that's not nice, they usually lose. Uh, 
Although I think here the decision is defensible for getting the facts because New Jersey and other jurisdictions had made the standard of good faith. I think they're just moving that direction. Now, there's, some, there's a note afterwards that the decision was later overturned, and they said that good faith is not enough. You have to be aggressive. <coughs> so I think this is perhaps people like Mike who say, screw this. You, know, you, have to, you have to have a serious intent. You can't just be mistaken. I don't know. Uh, Corbett. Yeah, so did the people's own, the land that they conveyed to the Indians, did they have to possess the land that they found? Well, isn't that a good one, right? They, they actually own this one, and they have this one by adverse possession. So in, in the end, the Kunzas had two lots, and Howard had zero. I think that's right. Everyone agree with that? I think that's right. Uh, again, someone may now <laughs> claim adverse possession as lot A. We don't know who the other parties are. right? So again, the easiest way to have done this was just everyone just sell the lot to their neighbor. right? That would have been fine, and then, but just Howard had to be a jerk. I think, at least. OK. Questions on this case? Questions on this? I'm sorry, what was that? I'm sure it's beautiful, yeah. But this is why people are fighting over it. Maybe, maybe that's why Kunta wanted the house. He's like, oh, screw it. I'll buy this land for free and get the house. Yeah. Yep. The modern trend. Right, the modern trend is good faith. The common law standard remains one of hostile, aggressive trespasser. And again, if what, for those of you who want to be in Texas, the aggressive test trip, blah. Texas uses the aggressive standard. Um, but at least some of these uh, other states are modern. Just curious, how many of you plan to take the Texas bar? Oh, almost all of you, okay. You're aware of the UBE, they, they're telling you what's going on there? Yeah, so you're under the UB. You don't have, you're not going to take the old Texas bar, but it's it's one of these it's one of these wrinkles that ninety something percent of our students will be taking the Texas bar. We're practicing in Texas, but I think there's going to be a lack of knowledge about what Texas law is because people don't want to take Texas classes anymore because it's not tested. Mm -hmm. So I, I I worry about that. I do. All right, if you're not taking the Texas bar, maybe you won't take Texas pretrial or Texas appellate. Right, you just won't take it because you don't have to. Uh, I, I think about these things. So I try to <coughs> give it to you when I can, at least as one else. We have a, we have a guy coming to school tomorrow from Barbary who's um, going to be talking to the faculty about the UBE and different things that we can do. So I'll, maybe I'll report back some things he tells us. I, I, there's like, there's like a thir every uh, 1L class is like a 30-minute block. So there's a block for contracts and a 30-minute block for torts. So I have like a 30-minute meeting with the guy tomorrow uh, talking about property. So I'll, anything, I'll report back. I see people with their Barbary books around. OK. Anything else in number one? Uh, I'm sorry, in the first case. All right, let's do some questions, if you can. Go to 101, please. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, no, we already did that one already. OK, never mind. We did it. OK, perfect. OK. OK. Sometimes I do class in different orders. I don't remember what we did. OK, that's good. Ah, disabilities. All right. Um, uh, in Texas, we have the disability statute. It's at 16.001. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I can't see name tag. Uh, K, is it K? Kate. Yeah, Kate. She, Avery was blocking her name tag. But name tags are good, except when they're right <laughs> behind someone. So, Kate, explain to me, for at least for the purposes of our class, what's a disability? Okay. Well, what's the legal effect of a person having a disability for our class? Well, in general, can an 18-year-old make a contract? Can a 17-year-old make a contract? Okay. Oh, <laughs> come on, you guys. Come on, you guys. Can it be enforced? Is it voidable? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, one of my students at last year, I was like, nah. okay. Can a person of unsound mind, whatever the hell that means, right, make an enforceable contract better? Make an enforceable contract? No. no. Okay. And why can't either a minor or a child make an enforceable contract? Just the, really think that they, are at the level of they lack capacity, right? I think that's the, that's the word we would use. 
right? We assume that children, minors, and people who have certain mental situations can't enforceable contracts. And it works the same way in property, right? They can't convey property. But what happens if a person who's a minor owns Blackacre? It happens, right? Children can own property. There's nothing, there's nothing that says you have to be 18 to own property, you can inherit it or otherwise. Can you squat against a child, <coughs> right? In other words, can you adversely possess land owned by a child? Or what happens if the person who owns Blackacre um, gets into a really bad car accident and they lose their mental cognition? Can that person who's not mentally there be expected to evict a trespasser? The answer is no. So the issue of disability arises precisely for that reason. Can a person who is under disability be expected to evict trespassers? No. Um, in Texas, there are these two categories. There's only two. If you're below 18 and if you're an unsound mind. Don't ask me what unsound mind means. I don't know. I think this is a term that's probably very old and doesn't have any sort of uh, reflection in what people think today, but that's the term in the statute. Um, other states have a bigger liability. For example, some states have veterans, that if you're deployed right, overseas, you're not expected to evict squatters. Uh, I know at least California has one for prisoners. If you're, you're buying bars, you can't be expected to eject prisoners. Um, everywhere else, I think, is, is fairly limited. Easy, right? But the tricky part of disabilities, right, is what happens if the disability arises after the squatting begins. So Celeste, let me ask you a question, please. Right? Someone starts squatting on Blackacre today, and the owner is of perfectly sound mind. Right? And then the next day the owner gets into a car accident and becomes, you know, comatose. Does the clock stop ticking? No, but I think the owner or their heirs would have to buy you around. No, no. The important point is the clock only stops if the disability exists when the squatting begins, right? You only pause the clock if the disability is there at the, when the person entries, right? That's why entry date is so damn important. You ask, at the time of entry, did the disability exist? If the answer is yes, the clock is stopped. If the disability arises at some point after the entry, tick, 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 the clock runs, right? Uh, a blessing. How long does a clock stop for if a person is comatose? Is there a, is there a limitation period? So I, I, I'm comatose, and then you start squatting on me tomorrow. How long does the clock stop? Which basically means forever, right? In other words, if you're squatting at someone in like a persistent vegetative state, you're you're, you're squatting forever. There's no the, the clock never starts ticking, right? The important point, and this up every year, is if the disability is present at the outset, the clock doesn't start. If the disability comes later, the clock. Everyone understand what I just said? Okay, so that's paragraph uh, B. Actually, it's um, paragraph D. I'm sorry, paragraph D. A disability that arises after the period does not suspend the running of the period. I think that's pretty straightforward, but people get this confused. Uh, designated, the, the harder one is paragraph C. Can you combine two different types of disabilities to tack them together? Okay, let me give you a, a question, a hypothetical, right? You start squatting on a minor when he's, you know, 15 years old. And on his 17th birthday, um, he gets into a car accident and becomes comatose. When does your clock start running? No. No, he was 15. He starts to squat. Does the clock run when he's 15? When would the clock usually start ticking? Forget the accident for a minute. Okay. So, he, so he's 15. He starts squatting on him. Gets into a car accident and is a coma <coughs> for the rest of his life. When does the clock, when does the clock start ticking?
But, but you said it before, right? If he's 15, and forget the accident, when would the, cl when, when would the clock start ticking? 18. Does the fact that he got into a coma change that? No. No. That's, period, that's paragraph C. You can't tack one disability to another. You get one disability. I know that sounds terrible, right? But you get one disability. So if a 15-year-old, and you start squatting on him, no matter what happens when he turns 18, your clock starts ticking. Your 10-year clock starts when he turns 18. Even if he gets into a coma on his 18th birthday, you don't extend it. Right? Now, age is a disability that thankfully takes care of itself. Usually people live to be 18, God willing, right? But let's say you start squatting on a person who's comatose, who is also 18. Right? Which one do you pick? You should pick the one that's longer. <laughs> so the comatose one will, will be when your clock's, when he gets out of the coma. Let's do some questions. I know this, it, it's, it's a little tricky. Go to 102, please. And I think, uh, is that uh, Lisa? Lisa, okay, so on page 102, um, uh, I think it's the bottom of the page. Number one, O is, o is insane. I, again, the word insane, I don't think we use anymore, but, but go for it. O is insane in 95. Go ahead, read that, please. Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, let me just read from the paragraph before. In this question, O is the owner in 1995. NA enters in 1995. The age of majority is 18. Okay, so again, A enters in 1995, and O is the owner. All right, so read uh, number 1A, please. O is insane. Uh, o is insane in 95. Good. Good. Okay, so let's start this question one at a time. O is insane in 1995, and A is squatting there, Lisa. Does the clock start ticking? Uh, so long as A, O is insane, does the clock start ticking? It does not. Then it says O dies in, in 2008. What happens to the clock in 2008? Mm -hmm. We start taking the clock for adverse possession in this case. True? Who's a six? What are you talking about? No, we're doing A here. We're doing A. O is insane in 1995. O dies insane in 2008. And ARH is under no disability in 2008. When does the clock start ticking? 2008. Okay. Why 2008? Well, the disability is gone, right? So when does O acquire Black Acre? There's a little math here, I'm sorry. <coughs> no, just paragraph A. Oh, man. Angie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. The clock starts ticking 2008, and you count 10 years from there. Is that true? Lisa, you see that? Do you want to try the letter B? Is that a no? <laughs> I'm not really asking. So Lisa, try letter B. Um, again, O is insane in 1985. O dies insane in 2008. Then it turns out that, that the air is six years old. When does the clock start ticking? That's right. Do you, do you stop it because this guy is only six years old? Do you pause it for the second disability? No, it doesn't. It, that's irrelevant. It only takes for one disability. The first. Not one, but just <coughs> the first one. Very good. Thank you. You only count the first one, so it doesn't matter 
whether that's six, the guy's only six years old. So the answer is the same again, it's 2018. So for A and B, it's 2018. Okay? Yeah? So I, I understood the checking, like if I'm under 18 and then I go into a coma, but you also can't check like... Multiple people? Nope. You can't. Yeah. Go look at the statute for a second, right? Right? A person may not tack one legal disability to another. It doesn't say disability in one person. It's just one disability in another. So you can use different people. That's exactly right. So every property you can now to the attorney and one thing can only? Yeah, well think of it this way though. The guy is has only to make it ten years. So once he gets to ten years, it's it doesn't matter who's disabled. Yeah, Anna. Yeah, I think Yeah. Make sense? Let's try number two. Next paragraph. Uh is that Melanie? Mm -hmm. Want to do number two, please? Okay, so let's take this one step at a time. O has no disability in 1985. And then A enters. When do we start ticking the clock here? What, what's that time? Oh, 95. That's good. Does it matter that a disability accrues later? <coughs> so when does, uh, o, um, so when does A get the uh, black acre? A gets it at age 33 majority. Oh, you screwed. No, 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 no. You had it. You had it. When does the clock start ticking? Oh, um, 95. And then when does the clock finish ticking? For no disability is in three years. But that's only legal disability. Does disability matter <coughs> in this question? Does so it regular statute of limitations? Statute of limitations, 10 years here. Mm -hmm. The statute of limitations, 10 years in this oh, question. Mm -hmm. That's what it says in this question. Let's go to the, it's there. I'm not making this up. Look, the statute of limitations, 10 years. It says it right there. It's 10 years. Where? <laughs> 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 I'm not the number 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like really don't understand it, so I need to know where 10 years is. Um, it's in the little indented part of the statute. We're using that as a statute. It's, it's not just disability. It's within the age of minority, so the person is after the expiration of 10 years from the time the cause of action. The stat, I'm telling you, the statute of limitations is 10 years. Well, then 10 years. Okay, so, so 10 years from 2005 is... 1995 is 2005. Okay. The, the answer is 2005. Okay. And the reason why, the reason why is because the disability arose later. The disability did not exist at the time the entry began. Therefore, the clocks are ticking immediately. If we were in a jurisdiction where the statute of limitations was three years, it would be 1998. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's do question three. Oh, good, Jessica. No, I'm sorry. I guess I got confused with the. Maybe I'm looking at I looked at them at the same time. Probably do one in five years. I don't really know. How that the, yeah. For all these, it's ten years. I thought that was. Yeah. What is this whole thing? May bring an action within five years. I guess tax is a disability, and so with the, so with what Rebecca just asked about the the guy wakes up from the coma. Yes. He only has five years to bring an action. No, the clock starts, and you have a ten. You always have a ten-year clock. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to let's let's do let's do question three. This one actually might. Be, this one's even harder, but let's try it. <laughs> Catherine, read question three. <laughs> <laughs> it's that that's the easy part. I'm telling you, it's ten years. It's it's always it's always ten years. Go ahead, Catherine. Ten, just read question three. Okay, so just stop one second, okay? O is eight ninety five. Okay? What year was he born? I, I know this sounds stupid, but it's important. What year was he born? 87. Okay, he was born in 87. Okay, when is he going to turn 18? Okay, very good. Okay, so he's born in 87. He will turn 18 in 2005. Okay, so keep reading. Good. Good. And he dies at the Poor guy. Right. Keep reading. Okay, again. A entered in 1995. 
when does the clock start ticking? Just stop reading now. When does the clock start ticking? In 2005. Tell me why. Because that's when an early termination is Exactly. Does it matter you got a disability before that? It doesn't matter. You can't tack the disabilities. You start the clock ticking in 2005 when he turns 18. Yes. Yes. And does it matter that he dies later? No. It doesn't matter. So when does he get adverse possession? I'm sorry. Uh, when does adverse possession kick in? 10 years after 2005. And what year is that? 2015. 2015. That's the answer. Exactly. Thank you, Catherine. Right? In theory, O's parents or guardians can bring a suit to eject, but they fail to. Right? In fact, when you're a guardian, one of your duties is to be aware of any sort of property interest that may arise. So the important point here is the clock starts ticking when he turns 18, no matter <coughs> what. It doesn't matter if he gets some sort of uh, injury beforehand. Everyone see these? If, if you didn't get these, maybe just go back after class and, and go through these again. But you have to remember just two rules, and the statute spells them out very, very clearly. You cannot tack one disability to another. You get one disability. And a disability that arises after entry doesn't count. The clock keeps ticking. Let me put this to you in a very simple fashion. You never stop the clock from ticking, right? There's no pause. No one asked about a pause. There's no pause. The clock keeps ticking. The only stoppage is at the start, at the entry. If at the entry there's disability, the clock stops. The clock may never restart if the person's always in a coma. But the clock will usually start when the person gets out of the disability. Okay, so just if you get confused, this is, I think, is a pretty good description of how this works. Yeah, Mac? Um, what about concurrent disability? Like if they're both there, it's not. Yeah, I think the usual rule, so let's say that when you enter, there's a minor <coughs> who's also a comatose, right? I think you can usually choose the longer of the two. So you would probably, the court would probably choose the comatose one and not start the clock ever. Yeah. Catherine? Okay, so if you have an underage owner that was underage when the adverse possession began, dies before becoming of age. Right, so he dies on his 17th birthday. Do you start the clock when they die? Yes, as soon as they die. Okay, so whichever comes first, either the death, death or 18, or yeah. 18. Yeah, because okay. once once they're dead, I know this is morbid, the disability is gone. So you clock, the clocks are tick, tick, tick. Okay. Is that Matt? Yes, sir. Uh, if you have a guardian, like most people do now, that, that wouldn't matter now, would it? Because the guardian well, the law is the same. I mean, but, but the, even the people have guardians, the law still gives you a disability, right? Okay. If you don't get those three, just go back on the YouTube and just watch this 15 minute section again and go through them again, because they're, 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 not, they're not obvious. And I, this usually takes me about 25 minutes to go through, which is about what it took right here, okay? If you, if you want, the questions are in your reading, so you can actually try them at home. No one ever does, but the questions are in your reading. I, kn I know. I've been doing this for a while. They're right there. I didn't make these questions up. They're in your book. Well, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. I don't upload things. My, my upload is my voice. The, the videos has YouTube, but I, I don't upload stuff. Okay. This is my upload. OK, everyone get the answers? Good. All right, um, there's a note about adverse possession against the government. Um, generally, you can't squat against the king, as they say. <laughs> um, there's a fun example in Rockefeller Center. Uh, everyone ever been there with 30 Rock? Mm -hmm. Right? There's actually a sidewalk right by the ice skating rink. And it's basically a private sidewalk. It's not owned by the city. And every year, it's usually a Sunday in July, they close off this little sidewalk. Why? To defeat any claims to adverse possession. Because someone somewhere may just go there every single day and walk across it and gain a prescriptive easement to it. So they basically literally block off access to this one little sidewalk one day a year to block off any adverse possession claims. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it happens. OK. Any questions on that? 
It's in Rockefeller Center, right by the ice skating rink. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was that our note on the rest of the Thanksgiving? No, I'm telling you something. It's not not there. <laughs> I'm telling you something. Well, I, 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 I'm uploading it to your minds. I'm giving it to you. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so if you yeah, basically you do it 365 days a year, because it's a sidewalk, and one week, I think it's like one Sunday a year, they shut down the sidewalk for a day. <coughs> All right, let's do the last case. True, true, true. But there was a guy who went to basically, I think every episode of the Today Show for like a very long time. Remember this? Just Google it. There was a guy who went to the Today Show taping every single day for like 20 years. I can't remember his name, but like he was like famous, not famous, but he was always there every day. He loved it. I don't remember, but. <coughs> people are so weird. No, people have, no, they have preferences. They're not weird. People like to do things. He, it, it made him really happy. He loved doing it, so he, he did it. No, I mean, he, he wasn't trying to gain average possession. He just liked watching the Today Show being filmed. I don't know. Case number two, uh, Liz, let's talk about adverse possessions of chattels. By the way, anyone like art? Anyone like George O'Keefe? Okay, I don't care about art, but this is not something. Wait till we get to, I really don't. Wait till we get to stuff on zoning and, and aesthetics. I just don't care. Um, I don't like museums of art. I, I, just, I, I, just, I, don't, I don't care. It's just, it's just never, never interested me. But anyway, here are the, this is George O'Keefe. Her, her husband took this photograph. The husband referenced it. it was a, there was weird stuff going. Just Google it. There's weird stuff going there. Um, all of her paintings resembled, say, privity. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, this is one called Cliffs, and this is one called Seaweed. OK. Uh, all right, so Liz, you want to give me the facts in O'Keefe against Snyder? Well, just give me the chronology. The sequencing here is actually pretty important. Okay. So she filed a complaint in 1976. Start, start much earlier. They were stolen from an art gallery in 1946. Start, yeah, OK. okay. So just start at the very beginning. 46 is good, but what happens yeah. first? <laughs> Do you want me to scroll? I'm sorry. Is this, is this serving you? <laughs> OK, here. You'll, you'll, is this better? Okay. Is that is that is that better? <laughs> I'm gonna get a title nine complaint. All right. Uh, so so Liz, yeah. Starting forty six. That's fine. I'll bring it back okay, later. Forty six. <laughs> okay. We need to start much earlier than nine thirty and seven thirty. Okay. So when were the paintings first noticed to be missing from the gallery? All right, Alexandra? Um, in well, in 72, what did she do? Um, okay, but when did you first realize they were not there? Okay, yes, that's right. Okay, so let's just get this chronology, right? <laughs> in 1946, O'Keefe becomes aware that paintings are missing from her gallery. You're good, you're right. Over the next 26 years, from 46 to 72, Alexandra, did she report anything missing? No, she didn't report anything. Well, she filed a complaint in 70. We'll get to 70, we'll get to 70 in a minute, right? And during this 26 year period, where were the paintings being held? No, no, no. Where were, where were they being hung? Where were they hanging for 26 years? Frank, very good, thank you. So for 26 years, we're hanging in Frank's house. Finally, in 72, O'Keefe reports them stolen with the Art Dealer Association of America. At this point, she was pretty famous, and she needed money, and she realized that these paintings were expensive and worth a lot of money, so she put out a report. Um, and this is an Art Dealer Association, and the thinking is, if you tell the dealers that there's some goods that are stolen, and they see it at an auction somewhere, they'll, you know, they'll flag it. Okay, Randall, what happens next? So then uh, she learned the paintings were with the uh, Henry Fitzroy uh, Gallery in New York. 
Good. Okay. And then what happens next? Replevin, yes, my favorite cause of action. She wants return of the pictures, right? Not damage, she wants the damn paintings themselves. All right. So the question in this case is when does the clock start ticking, right? Um, now, generally with property, with real property, um, it's going to be obvious when a person's squatting, right? They're on the land, they're there, and they're living there. But chattels are different, right? Because generally chattels aren't out in public. They're hanging on a wall somewhere. Or imagine if it's a piece of jewelry sitting in a, a safe somewhere, right? Now, I know, Mike, you, you must have loved this holding of Oh, Keith? <laughs> why why she bug you? Well, uh, she's kind of crazy. Y yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, here I'll go back to this one, right? <laughs> well, why why did it bug you though? What what did O'Keefe? Well, she she was you know forty seven, I believe, when she actually realized it in her husband's gallery. Oh, I guess we can paint it. And what'd she do about it? Nothing. Okay, and why did she do nothing? Did they kind of hinted in the opinion? Uh, Thirty years later. Yeah. yeah. But I, and she didn't tell the police. No. So I But but should she be punished? I mean, this is sort of the question for you. You know, should a person be punished for not trying to pursue their property rights for three decades or just, just let it go? Yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, you know, I, You think at some point yeah, it's I mean, been hanging in this guy's living room for thirty years, maybe he should have yeah, a claim he to it? He had he thought he had yeah, he probably bought it from a, from, from a stolen art dealer. Okay. So, Brian, let me ask you a question. Under the common law, when would the clock start ticking, right? When would, when, when would the clock, the, 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 the limitation period start ticking, the clock, under common law rule? When she noticed it was missing. When she noticed it was missing, okay. And when was that? 46, so basically, what we're we talking, like 1952 or something, right? This year period would have run out in the 50s. What does the New York Court do here? Oh, okay, so I think I said this in class yesterday. Whenever you have a decision from the New Jersey Supreme Court, what are they going to do? Yeah. Reverse the common law. I'm, look, I'm two for two, right? Uh, I, I, I will bat a thousand this semester with that rule. Um, the court reverses the common law, but they do so in a very um, bizarre fashion, right? So first off, the court basically says there are factual disputes here, right? There are factual disputes about whether they were stolen, whether they were sold, maybe the husband gave them away. You think the husband gave him away to another girlfriend or something? Yeah, that's what I think, right? It just, and that's probably why she didn't want to make a fuss about it. That, I, that's, that's my theory. I, I totally un uninformed that people are nodding, okay? The, the, the husband, I mean, just look at this picture. He was a, he, he got around. Uh, yeah, so the husband probably sold them or gave him his gifts. We don't really know. And she didn't want to make a fuss about it. But there were facts in dispute, right? There were facts in dispute. So Lacey, generally what does a court do, if an appellate court do if there's factual disputes? What? They remand it. Do appellate courts, especially a state supreme court, are they in the business of finding facts? No, they're in the business of overturning decisions based on the facts that were presented. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you guys are be lawyers in a couple of years. Appellate lawyers are bound by a record, right? You have a record and that's it. You can't go outside the record unless, unless you're the US Supreme Court. They do it all the time. But generally, you can't go outside of a record. You can't make up facts. You can't find facts. You can't have a, a you know, witness testify. At the appellate proceedings, you're limited to the record. So the Jersey court just should have said, remand and figure out the facts. But they didn't, right? You have to read all these pages, right? They should just stop there. Facts are in dispute. I don't know. Remand for future, future proceedings. But instead, they did this entire 
long, drawn out analysis with this other stuff. So, oh, back down top. So, Davis, what does the court do instead of just remanding? They, they put out a lot of stuff. What's the discovery rule? Uh, the discovery rule is that uh, the statute of limitations runs when the owner knows of a cause of action and the other mistake must be listed. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so generally, with adverse possession, the rule is you start the clock when the person realizes the items are missing. That is, they have a six-year period to do all the due diligence needed to try and track the thing down that's theirs. And if they fail to track it down in six years, they lose it. I mean, this is more like legalized theft to Mike's position, right? If you steal someone's jewels, or if you steal someone's stuff, they can actually keep it, which is kind of a weird, weird thing. But the court here adopts a discovery rule, which says that the cause of action, that is the clock doesn't start ticking, until the injured party discovers or should have discovered the facts. Now, again, she knew it was missing, but she didn't know where it was. She didn't know it was hanging on the guy's wall somewhere. So New Jersey would basically say, you don't start the clock until she knows where it is. Right? She knows that's in some guy's gallery somewhere even though she took no action to investigate it for nearly 25 years. All right? So the court changes the rule. Okay. This flips things around a little bit. Right? Usually the person who's squatting has the burden. Right? If I'm squatting on Blackacre, it's my job to show that I've been there for 10 years with hostility and all this other stuff. But here, O'Keefe has to show. Right? O'Keefe has the burden here to show that she was mad about it in 1972. So this law sort of flips adverse possession on its head. So the bottom line is with this squatting, I'm sorry, with this, with this uh, discovery rule, you're allowed to sit on your butt, basically, for however many years, and the clock only starts ticking after you know or should have known where it is. Yeah, well, I mean. Yeah, it's not just enough to know it's missing. You have to know where it is. So both parts need to be there. Well, to, to, she knew it was missing right away. That's not enough. She has to know basically where it is. For personal property, you have to actually know it's on display somewhere. It's, on, it's hanging out of the living room. Angie? Um, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question, and I'll, let me answer it. Uh, there are a lot of statutes passed that have extended statutes of limitation for recovered art and stolen art. In other words, if a piece of art was stolen, let's say, in 1939, you probably didn't get it in 1945. Stuff was still going on there. Actually, I don't even know what German average possession laws are like, but the periods to recover stolen art have been extended significantly. Um, you see this in other contexts too with, um, so I mentioned uh, the Catholic Church, with abuse cases, right? Usually you have a statute of limitation to bring various causes for abuse and uh, harassment and other things. Uh, New York has a special thing going on now where all statute of limitations for child abuse are waived. So it's only for like a two year period, so basically you have a 30 year old claim and it's still fresh. So in sort of the special cases you're alluding to, 
you can extend and, and, and by statute the statute of limitations, but here it's done by court order. Yes, uh, Catherine. Uh, the New Jersey court is always the outlier, which is why I urge you not to treat that as law. Okay, so majority yeah. requirement. I always debate, maybe you should just skip this case, but it's a really good case. It's actually a, a fun case to read. Most cases are pretty boring, so I leave it in, but this is not a majority rule by any extent. Okay, Rebecca. So, like, uh, yeah, 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 but I'll tell you. In your exam, I'll usually say what jurisdiction you're in. I'll say you're in Texas, or I'll say you're in New Jersey. If I say you're in New Jersey, you know what to do. I do that occasionally. I've had a couple of New Jersey questions. It's so freaking in left field. It's just, it's just, it, it's such an outlier that sometimes I like testing you guys on it. I've done that a couple. I, I had one question on Hurricane Sandy years ago. So I, I, I had some Jersey questions. Yeah, uh, bless him. Will, yeah, I mean, you studied lost property in, in, in last semester, right? Um, and if you remember, there's a difference between lost and abandoned property and all these different sort of gradations. Um, here, I think, you, I think the properties were given away or sold, so I don't think they were lost. I, I don't think they were stolen. But, you know, if, if someone robs your house um, and you don't retrieve it after a certain period of time, uh, you're probably out of luck. It's sort of this thing, like if you can hold on to it for long enough, it's yours. Which again, to, to go to back to Mike's general grievance, that's adverse possession, right? Someone trespasses and gets your house, or they break into your safe and steal your jewels. In both cases, they hold on to it long enough that that's theirs. Tom? So here, for, FA, well, for final purposes, so we need to know the common law, which the limitations start with the post of the term, the Missing, that's right. The modern rule, I think so, yeah. Yeah. All right. Questions? All right, let me, let me summarize a bit if I can. A um, uh, couple, couple of major points for today. Uh, keep in mind tacking, right? When you want to combine uh, limitation periods for adverse possession, um, make sure, make sure that there's privity. And I can test in this different ways, but make sure that there's some relationship between the parties. I don't think that's been writing. Um, let's talk about disability for a minute to summarize. With disabilities, if the disability is present at the start of the entry, the clock does not start running until the disability disappears. Right? If, it, if, the, if the disability exists at the beginning, the clock is stopped until the disability goes away. If the disability arises after entry, tick, 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 clock keeps going. If there's one disability, and then another one after, even a different person, you only get one shot. Okay? And of course, with the adverse possession, the common law rule, as Tom told us 30 seconds ago, uh, the common law rule is the click, the click. The clock starts ticking when you realize the thing's missing. And in New Jersey, of all places, you get 30 extra years because you can wait till you know or should have known where it is. Okay. I think that's all I got. All right. Unless I hear otherwise, we'll start at um, <coughs> seven thirty um, on Tuesday. All right. Have a enjoyable weekend, everyone. Thank you. Do you want? Do you want to come up? I, yeah, I don't want to shout. Yeah. Well, in New Jersey, it's going to vary in every jurisdiction. Okay, all right. But the statute of limitations.